two huge stories today. One has to do with politics and an absolute thumping of who went against crypto and asset. The second, Cardano beating back a DDoS attack and showing that sometimes a tortoise really does win the race. So before we get into that, there was a video we did yesterday and we talked about the different uh, years leading up to uh, the all-time highs. And we always take a look at the four-year cycles, of course, like we talked about this many a time, but specifically we looked at the halving years, 2016 and 2020, as opposed to what's potentially gonna happen. And that yesterday's video, we talked about how the next six months historically are incredibly bullish. There's only one month in the last halving year in 2020, which was negative. And also in 2016, there's only two, but four or five are pretty good. But what I failed to mention was taking a look at actually the first halving year, uh, which was 2012. That was the very first halving. And it was even more bullish than the ones beforehand. So again, I think we're in the right place at the right time, moving forward into the cycle. Now, does that mean that you should uh, put everything into Bitcoin right now and sell your house and kids and kidneys? And that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I think that over the next six months, it, things should do pretty well. And also, uh, interesting enough, is that uh, if we take a comparative look at uh, the one year after the all-time highs, which would be 2014, because we had an all-time high in 2013, 2017, and 2018, and 2022, as opposed to 2021, the year after the all-time high, look at the six, the back six months. It's pretty much all red. So again, I think things are going to do pretty well. I don't really think that uh, the Fed's fund rate is the end all be all because we hit all time highs when it was you know just in the median five percent hit all time highs when the federal funds rate was five and a quarter percent and even taking a look at again the M2 money supply we do it when the printer's on when the printer's off the only thing that I didn't really mention also yesterday was adoption and I want to just say congratulations to New Bank which is owned by Warren Buffett as they integrate Lightning payments that means a hundred million customers in Latin America are now going to be exposed to a faster cheaper way to move funds around on the Lightning Network. So congratulations to them. That was just a follow-up. Now let's get to the big stories. The big story, too, uh, that I can see, and of course there's other things going on out there, but I think this is the biggest things. First of all, there was an absolute beatdown of a Democratic incumbent who went against crypto and lost bigly. So this is, uh, we're talking about Bowman. Jamal Bowman, crypto industry cheers Bowman loss Curtis victory in key election and primaries. And the thing that's interesting to me though, as you see right here, it talks about how super PACs spent millions of dollars to support pro crypto candidates. Now look, you can do whatever you want with your money. And if that's gonna be for pro crypto, I'm all for it. So here's what we have today. The pro crypto super PAC Fair Shake funded to the tune of $169 million by some of the biggest names in crypto, said it was behind a $2 million ad spend opposing Bowman that ran the days leading up to the primary. So if you don't know, this right here is Jamal uh, Bowman. He's uh, right now unemployed. He is a Democrat for uh, New York, and he was in the House of Representatives, and that is no more. And the reason for that, of course, is because, well, there's many reasons, but one of those is he was not too uh, crypto happy. And this is a quote from uh, Josh Vlasto, spokesman for Fairshake. He says, Jamal Bowen fought against setting clear rules of the road for the crypto and blockchain industry. And tonight he's looking for a new job. Crypto and blockchain community will continue to support candidates who believe in innovation and job creation and reach across the aisle to get things done. That's all we're asking for. We're not asking for something major. We're just asking for a little bit of guidance. And I wish uh, Gary Gensler could do his job and actually give it to us. And we'll get into that in a second. But also remember, there's bigger names out there. There's the Winklevoss twins, and they've actually uh, contributed to this same fund. They also contributed a couple million dollars to uh, Donald Trump. But they stayed here, and this is actually in response to an AOC or an Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweet where she says, people everywhere need to understand how disgusting and abnormal it is for special interest to dump nearly 15 million to unseat a member of Congress in a primary. This is corruption. It is a core threat to American democracy. It also feels Trump support Jamal Bowman. And you've seen uh, probably that video where she's uh, you know, very hyped up and talking about Jamal Bowman and the Bronx and going uh, kind of ballistic. But uh, here's the thing, it's not illegal and it's not unsettling. And if people want to spend their money to support a candidate they believe in for their specific issues, that's called America. 
And uh, I will tell you right now, I'm just guessing that uh, if the same amount of money uh, flowed into Jamal Bowman's camp, I don't think AOC would be saying anything. Let me know where I'm wrong in the comment section. That's all we got. And the reason why, part of the reason why he, he lost, of course, he went against uh, the Fit 21 bill, although it was passed by Democrats. Not all Democrats are evil. I want you to everybody remember that. Uh, Bowman's a Democrat. He was one of the few that voted against it for whatever reason. And there might be a good reason because he's uh, alliance and friendship with Elizabeth Warren. He also voted against Saab 121, which uh, let's see how that works out. But there's that win. And then also uh, there is a gentleman named John Curtis. He is a Republican uh, from Utah, and he is taking over for Mitt Romney. So he's now the driver's seat in, uh, I believe, that in the Senate. So, and he is very uh, pro Bitcoin. He states, uh, Bitcoin and crypto have come a long way since Laszlo, whatever, bought pizza on this day in 2010. While the value has skyrocketed, crypto has become a significant part of our economy, especially here in Utah, where Overstock was one of the first companies to accept crypto payments. And uh, yeah, couldn't say any better. So <clears throat> right now, I think that is uh, two big wins. I know some people will say, well, Rob, why do you talk so much about uh, politics? And it's because politics, we don't need politicians to come for us or with us to this next evolution of what's going to happen in finance. We don't. But I will just remind you that they can make things a hell of a lot faster or they can impede them. And if you don't believe me, here's everybody's favorite fun guy, Gary Gensler. And uh, just take a listen to what he says in this recent interview. This is a field that the leading lights from a couple years ago are either in jail, about to go to jail, or waiting extradition. Think about it. This is that field. That's the field right now where the public has really been harmed. And there's significant non-compliance in the field. Well, I can tell you what there's non-compliance because there's no clear guidelines. And that is supposed to be set by the chair of the SEC, which for some reason just can't seem to get it done. Hopefully he'll be gone in the next evolution, but we will see. And I got to tell you, John Deaton had a great response to him. We don't know. John Deaton right now is uh, running against Senator Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts. There's a link in the description if you would like to donate to his campaign, as I have so humbly done. But here's what he states. As the person who literally sued the SEC on behalf of tens of thousands of small investors, I can state with 100% conviction that Gary Gensler and the SEC has caused more harm to investors than any other person or entity during the last several years. What Gensler fails to disclose is that he personally met twice with Bernie Madoff of crypto SBF FTX, which would be, of course, Sam Bankman fried and has yet to turn over all the notes and documents related to those private meetings. Note to Gary, if you think I was a pain in the A as a private citizen working for free, wait to see me as a U.S. senator working on behalf of American taxpayers. If you can get behind that, first of all, throw a comment in the comment section. Second of all, donate to John Deaton. We need him to beat Elizabeth Warren. So there is that piece. That is a win, as I can see it. And then also, don't forget those other senators and and House representatives that are actually pro Bitcoin and crypto. And they're not all Republicans. There's some Democrats out there, true. But uh, one I just want to give a shout out to is uh, Ted Cruz from the great state of Texas. And he states uh, just yesterday, he is incredibly bullish on Bitcoin because the government can't control it. The fact that there are only going to be 21 million Bitcoin is a big deal. And on top of that, just two or three weeks ago, Ted Cruz fired up his first Bitcoin miner. So give it out to Ted Cruz for actually hopping aboard the Bitcoin digital asset train. We need more people like him on and backing Bitcoin and crypto. So there is that piece. I thought that was a pretty big uh, story. And the second one is Cardano. Now, Cardano is one of those chains that uh, really has been a little bit lackluster in the uh, price appreciation department. But yesterday there was a DDoS attack. And from there, not only did it not shut down, there was a little bit of slowdown, I believe, correct me in the comment section, but very, very minor, very, very minor. And it was actually repelled and turned around in hours, and there was no negative aspects of it. And Dave from It's Dave Ada says this, Solana gets attacked, they all have to meet in Discord and restart, which is kind of funny, but also true. Cardano gets attacked, delegators get extra eight awards, transaction volume goes up, blockchain remains operational, and most funny of all, attacker gets attacked and pays for development on Cardano for Anastasia Labs and his victim to us. Why are you not bullish on ADA? 
And if you want to like a real quick rundown of what all that is and how that actually happened, follow my friend uh, Ada Ape on X or what was called Twitter as he lays out of what a DDoS attack is, what the solution was. Essentially, he compares it to a library and he says a uh, library has a way to remove these junk books from the system. Each junk book is a specific identifier. If anyone removes one of these junk books, they get a small reward. And that is what the ecosystem of Cardano did and did it quite quickly. And then to sum it all up, he says, in essence, the network is proving its robustness by handling the attack efficiently and providing a mechanism for users to help mitigate the attack while being rewarded for their efforts. And for the show, uh, Dan Gambardello, he had a great uh, stream and talked about it and what it all means. I will link that in the description uh, of this video so you can check it out. And he goes into way more details. And uh, also, uh, he's also a fan of uh, Minutes Network. Now, I've been talking about this for like three or four days or so. And the reason is because I've been I've invested into it. And uh, you know, on this sh channel, I don't talk about it unless I do. But uh, Minutes Network, I was hinting that there was a, uh, a government contract and they have a partnership with Samoa. Now, Samoa isn't the biggest place, I will give you that, but to have a government contract, which is blockchain and DPIN, I think says something about the project itself and uh, their partnerships that they're having. Now, we just talked about another partnership that they have with 1.2 billion customers. Take a look at that uh, from uh, yesterday's. But we did a deep dive in this video. I will link that in the description of the actual project, I should say, of Minutes Network. So check that out and go from there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video and give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. And uh, that is it for this one. So thanks so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.